time so you guys can see, feel, and really understand the music production process for me, and it is the case for most of us, inside the box, inside Logic Pro X, but can of course apply all the technique that I use in Logic Pro X to your own DAW. And the best about those episodes, guys, is that I always make a template for Logic Pro X, Ableton, and FL Studio that goes along this tutorial. Tutorial is always free, of course. Thank you, YouTube. And you can go on the site to get the templates if you really like that sound or do you want to do something, do a remix and really learn the technique that I'm putting in there. You can get the template on our site, www.musicdance.com. And that's it, guys. Today, I'm going to make some captivating trance. What I mean by captivating trance is some trance with some melodic element that will really get you in. It is not uplifting, but it will be more captivating. 132 BPM. I'm not sure I will keep it only with Logic Pro X plugin. Might go into silent, might go into serum or spire or something like that, but I'm not absolutely certain because I do make music in real time and I go with the feel of what I do, guys. And if it is your first time watching, guys, there's another 250 episode to watch, you should check it out. Another good element about making great music in real time is coffee and I haven't made an episode in a while, you probably have watched other episodes if you do watch. I finished the studio here, put some bass trap, build some acoustic panels, you know, set up things. I'm about to build a decor, so it's gonna get better and better as we go. And that's it guys, let's listen to, oh, another important part is I did pick one of the most popular chord to start this episode, so it, it's better for me to start record because I'm not such a composer on the piano. I'm a better engineer, mixer, arranger. And I can do a lot starting with just this chord, so have a listen, guys. So this is where we're starting, guys. This is basically, it's a chord progression, super popular chord progression. It's an E, it just, it just moves along. I mean, with this pad, it's on. Oof, it's nothing very interesting, but I mean, it's a start. So I think first I'm going to do a little bit of a, a little bit of work with the kick, snare, hat. I'm going to check out the key of the kick, C, D, E. So I'm going to tune the kick to the chord, which is an E. Just like for me, I like everything to be tuned. You know, it's always better. I can tune up or down. So I'm C, D, E here. I can also put the sequencer in here, in E, so I think the second kick here, I might drop it to an octave lower. Still still left to be mixed anyway, so I'm going to take this pad and tone it down. So we can hear the chord, we know it is there, but you know, I don't want to to get annoyed by it by the time I start building. So of course, simple snare, again, same key, command, shift, upper key, up, it didn't work, well, let's select it again, command, shift, upper key. Let's see if we are in the range. The root key is here at C3, it's too high, I'm gonna keep it lower. That's very loud. I'm not sure it's going to be this terrible because I have other snares down here. Mm, might be. Let's check the third one. It's almost a hip hop snare, like a trap snare. By the way, guys, this kit name is Above and Beyond. Interesting. I don't know if it has anything to do with the groove of Above and Beyond, but it does, to me at least, have similarities to, to the, the stuff they do, so it might be related. No hi-hat, super simple. Again, up, and I can move it here, simply. I'm gonna put it in, it does sound a lot like above and beyond really, so. They used to release a lot of music, but lately, a lot less. You know, they do a lot of different things, but not so much music is coming out. Used to be a big, big fan, like, I mean, like so many years ago that I can't even recall. I'm not gonna balance it, mix it or something like that. I'm just gonna put it all together like this. And then the first thing I would do is simply take my root chords here. You can see the chords. Simple, but, but effective. I don't think you need something up here. And then I'm gonna create a bass line. So I'm thinking, so the hits, 
so what, what am I doing with this bass line? Am I going to do, so it's a bit more melodic, so it should be quite rolly, I would say. So we're going to go, we're going to go quite rolly as in, as in very rolly, helps. And then we're going to play more with maybe the LFOs and, and the elements inside the bass line to try to give it some character or some effect because it might be quite like this, you know, quite uh, like even and a bit boring, but there's a chord progression in the back that always do something great with it. So I'm going to go into bass here and uh, is there trends in trend? Oh, there's trends genre here. I mean, you know, who knows? I'm going to do that here. I'm going to go and browse a little bit with you guys. I think I might be a bit low. Am I? Not necessarily. Depend, depends on the presets, really. I think I, I think I am a bit low, so I'm gonna bring it up an octave. Okay, so that that is already. That's as cool, it has a nice feel. Not necessarily what I'm looking for. Whoa, that was intense. So I want like a rolly kind of trans bass. Apprentice. What I'm gonna do right away with this, because I do like what I hear. I'm definitely gonna have to do a lot of work on it. However, it's there. I'm gonna put a compressor, sidechain it right away to pump it in the mix properly. I'm gonna take the instrument, kick one. You can see it, it's compressing, sidechain compression. So the bass is of course reacting when the kick is hitting. Let's not go too hard on it. Let's have a look at that bass and what is in it. There's different types of it. Definitely the squash one. Two. Bit of distortion, yes. Or the, the in unison, yes. I'm gonna stop this pad because it's you know it's a bit much. Hmm. I'm not really sold on it. I need a, a base that's gonna be strong enough to stand on its own and still make the track right. Hmm. Much better start with. Not too sure about this uh, ring modulator there. I don't know where it is. Ah, here you go, it was here. I don't really want it, so... It's a bit of... of... Because I love this about alchemy, I mean, no synth has this type of control. Have a bit of space in there, I'm not sure. Bit of unison definitely works. That could be cool. Maybe in some parts. We're just getting started, guys, of course. So now I'm thinking something really airy, like a melody. 
Maybe an ARP, maybe not. I think, I think I could try an ARP, but without the base keys there. So I'm gonna go again into alchemy. I'm gonna pick up an ARP. I think there's one that's this. That I've used multiple times, but it's just for me, it's just a starting point that I can do something with. No, I don't like this ARP, so it's too. I used it. I liked it, I, th I think, in one track, and I really liked it. I think this guy, is, these things happen to you guys too. So I like it a lot into one track and I think I can put it everywhere and then you realize, yeah, that worked in that one track, but then it doesn't really work elsewhere as, as, as much. So, you know, creating your own little ARP is, is not complicated here. As, as we do this and then I'll go top again and then that's, that's pretty much it. You can do a sequence like this. And then do something a little bit similar, but not necessarily exactly the same. But may maybe to preserve the, the kind of feel of the previous keys in there. Oh wait, I didn't do the same thing at all. I am <laughs> I'm a little bit off here. So this is just to do, like I said, a little ARP that's going to be intricate. I think it's not necessarily the ARP that will make the thing, it's how it is, is put together in the mix. It has to me, to me, what I see here has to be captivating. So it has to be kind of dreamy, it has to have some quality to it. You know, it has to really bring something special to the track that you can run only this with minimal percussions or just a kick even, and, and that's it. With this, with the bass, should be enough to drive the track forward, which is not always that obvious. Okay, almost there. Take a bit of time. Okay, so we have the idea of the ARP. Then we're gonna have to go and select the sound, which might not be this one. Because the harp is not, not quite, and to me it has to be. I know some some call it cheesy, you know. It has to be a bit cheesy. It has to be something that you hear that you feel like, not that you literally heard before, but something that's familiar. I would say. one is good. This one is also cool. There's something in there. I think we definitely right away need a reverb in there to give this little pad we just created some dimension. So I'm gonna go in there, drop a reverb here, silver verb of course. Keep on using mostly Logic Works plugin, if not all or only. Completely wet, of course, because it's a sand effect. Now it's it's singing a little bit more. I would say. I think first thing I would do is to drop an EQ on there. Then I do that in, on a lot of my tracks, guys. So take a compressor to and compress the signal from the reverb. I like the pumping kind of effect where the kick kind of act on a lot of different things in the mix. So always leave a bit more room. You can hear. So basically the wet signal of the, the, the reverb is being processed with sidechain with the kick. 
nothing, nothing so advanced, but I mean, this creates a great effect. I can also lower now the volume of the reverb because it's more present, because it's compressed. this we can put it in the back a little bit It's nice, but I don't have the cutoff that I'm looking for here, so I'm gonna do it manually here. And I do have some decent bass, however, it's not quite deep enough, so I'm just gonna drop it an octave just to see. No, it's just mud. <laughs> I call it mud. So I have this ARP. I think this ARP I would do also. Yes, as I chain. Sorry, the. The sand, uh, I'm, I'm confused with what, what I'm saying, sorry, just one second. Yes, I did uh, sidechain the reverb sand to this, which is bus six here. I also want to sidechain the signal itself to really go a bit crazy pumping it. Maybe not that, that intense, I would say. Just a little bit. Get a bit more volume out of it now, a bit more presence for sure. Gonna right away trim the low end, even knowing this is really none. It's very focused frequency because it's bell Z. Bell Z, the bells tend to have very narrow frequencies. Be very focused in those frequencies. I think I can bring back the pad. Fill the mid lows a little bit more. I'm gonna drop the low end here because I want the low end to be something else. Still want the presence. It's dreamy. I, li I like what I'm hearing. I mean, we're just getting started, of course, guys. So the ARP is there. We might change it a little bit later. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another channel where I'm just gonna do very low sub bass in there because I think this is missing because our rolling bass is nice. I think the sub bass will go on a like a simple pattern of hits like this, big and raw. I'm not too sure what sound it would be for, but uh, already applied the side chain compression to this too. Of course, I'm gonna go into alchemy. I'm gonna go into bass again and I'm gonna go maybe something more chunk complex distorted something something more trippy bring it some volume mm, already a lot more power here we just fill the low end. Here. The ARP is on? I don't want, it's off. This is a bit odd. Oh, I guess there's a sequence. Let's look into perform here. Ooh. Kind of like this chunk here.
turn this down a little bit. It's a bit strong in the mix. Definitely is a good start. Let's look how long. Oh, we're 20 minutes. Let's keep on going, definitely. For a lot more. Gonna create a bit of length into the mix. Gonna show my secondary ruler here to see the timing. I'm gonna try to make a minute kind of loop in there with a bit of a, some more element. Keep on adding. I think the first thing I will do, well, I'm just gonna replicate this kit here. I think myself a 909 kit. I like some of the elements in there. TR909 are, are nice. The kick has a nice impact. The open ads are interesting. I should do Control A, color region by track and name region by track. So th those are not all all kicks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the hat here and turn it into like a rolling hat that's going to go at the top. I like to take a different drum machine, so it's. Uh, it will interact differently in the mix than if I would be the same machine. So I want, like I said, a rolling, completely rolling, full on hat. It is rolling, however, in the mix, it will, it will be drawn in the elements, but I still want it. Something like this. Here's one. Select it, see if I'm within the range. We could bring it up an octave. No, it's too high. Oh, there's a lot of frequency even here <laughs> in, in the hat. So let's make sure we're not crowding our mix already. What I like to do with something like that too is probably add a sample delay. So we're gonna do check this out: 10 millisecond here and 20 millisecond here. 20 here, 10 didn't work, so I'm gonna 10 here. So, guys, listen to this with. It's like it creates kind of a stereo field effect without. Without, it's very centered, it's there. Uh, with just this, it, it just kind of creates the space, it's a bit harder to mix. Then I seen the clap here, I think it's a good idea. to do a clap. I'm so used to mixing the speakers now that when I do tracks in the headphones, which I don't really have choice, guys, it's 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 a bit thin. I have a sub now. Guys, I should have added that as a news. I have a sub. Adam, sub, wow, what a great. With the treatment in here, this is a nice room. Definitely. Worth a little investment here. So this is good. I think this could be there, but not super present. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm tempted to. I'm tempted to drop a little piano kind of melody in there. Yeah, I could do that. Uh, check if I have. I'm gonna go sampler, stereo. I'm gonna go here, lots of pianos. I personally like the Yamaha, personally. It's kind of my thing. It's a bit hard when you put a, like some piano in a trance track. We have to put it. Give it some reverb, of course.
gonna give myself a bit more space to be able to record something. I think I could also drop a reverb or a delay on there. There's a nice delay from the 909 kit. I think I like this as a sequence I just did here. Gonna, of course, edit it and make it very interesting. Mix it. Quantize it. I'm not sure about this key here. I think we'll, whoops. I think it would be better to go here. Not quite, no? So we have a piano layer now. I wouldn't say it's the final, it's, it's a work in progress for now. Let's see if we add the, those little bells. I think what I can do is to make sure that I'm in key, as usual. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do everything to put it. Better. So I don't think the part should play together. Maybe at some point in the mix, but not necessarily. What I would also like to do now to continue in this track is to add some kind of trance stabs or pianos. Oops, not all of the MIDI, but some. So where I'm gonna get those stabs, it's a good question. I don't know if I can, I'm gonna go into leads here in Alchemy. What I was looking for, super solid. Thank you. Turn, 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 turn. Sounds a lot like a silent, I would say. It would be nice with a bit of a verb, I would say. Here.
trying to tune them a little bit better. What we're doing. I, I think a side chain would be great on there, so I'm gonna take the side chain from the verb here. Whoa. I think I would add another hit to here. Turn, 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 turn. I know this is kind of cheesy normal, but I mean, we, put, we want to put the things down now to have a bit of an idea of where we will go with the track. So this is a good way to go to build, to build, to build, and eventually to, you know, end the, end the arrangement and the mix later on, we can do a lot more work to really make a track out of that. But I think the most important thing is to lay the ideas down and after you get the ideas down, then you know the easy part comes, where where you you can make the best out of them. And what I personally do, I'm gonna turn this up. So what I personally do is I do this, take this, and start mixing, arranging, and I would add, remove parts, and of course I will create a template for you guys. And this is the end of episode 315 of Your Life Electronic Music Tutorials. I hope you guys enjoy. I will keep on going on that track. Mix it here in the studio with the sub and everything. Make sure everything is tight. Everything is working together perfectly. So check out the result in the link below. And until next time, may the sounds be with you. 